Well, some of you probably remember this axe handle, which uh, was made from green bay wood, and then later I had to steam it to straighten it. It's been kind of a project. Well, that project's finished, as you can see here. And I think the wood just was not up to the task. Uh, my general impression of bay wood from working with it is that it's pretty heavy and dense and tough. This is not. This is actually quite light and pithy now that it's fully seasoned out. There were a few knots in here that may have weakened it a little more, but even without those, I think it would have failed eventually for sure. I'm not unhappy that it broke, actually. I kind of want to go on to version 2.0 anyway, which is going to be a little bit shorter. And, you know, now I have this as kind of a reference, like a working reference. I used it a lot. And I kind of want to see just what making a few modifications will do. So this is going to be 28 inches with a little curve at the end here, if I can find a piece of wood that will accommodate that curve. But anyway, what I'm really here to talk about is sharpening. So I usually sharpen my axes with a rectangular stone like this in kind of this motion, back and forth, back and forth, or in a circle or whatever. So this is pretty good because it keeps your hands far away from the edge and it's really fast. For me, it's all about getting this done so I can get back to work. So this is extremely fast to use and that's great. So good things about it. However, there are some drawbacks. One of them is that you're always wearing a groove in your stone usually in about the same place. So if you want to use the stone to sharpen anything else, you need to grind it flat again. And so if you're sharpening your axe on a regular basis, then that's really a hassle because almost every other tool besides an axe is uh, flat beveled. So, you know, your draw knives, knives, chisels, plane blades, almost everything, you're going to want a pretty flat bevel. And so you need a flat stone. So constantly redressing the stone, not so fun. The other thing is this is just big and clunky and fragile. So I don't want to drag this around in the woods. And what I really wanted was something I could put in my pocket and forget about and just take out and just it'll just be there when I need it and I don't notice it otherwise. So what I really wanted was an axe puck. This is like a round stone that you hold with your fingertips and, and work like this. And I actually have one that I like okay. It's an older one and the fine side's pretty fine, but I can't find it. It's just buried in my piles of junk somewhere and I, I just don't know where it is. So I looked around to see what was available and there's not a lot available. There's actually, you know, there's several brands of really cheap stones. The most common one is the Lansky Puck. Um, this is 180, 280 is the grits, and that's really coarse. Like, I don't even think of that as sharpening. To me, that sounds more like grinding. So that one's out just because it's too coarse. So the other one is uh, Grand Spores and Wetterlings use the same stone that's just rebranded differently for those two brands. And it has a 600 side, so I think it's 280, 600, something around there. Or maybe it's coarser, 120, 600, whatever. The fine side is 600, that's the important part. So that sounds pretty good, um, but it's 44 bucks, dude, 44 bucks. I'm not gonna pay 44 bucks for a tiny ax buck, and it, it is pretty tiny too. That one was out too. I just was not willing to go there. So what I really wanted was a Japanese Waterstone ax puck. And I looked around and I found a couple of round ones I could glue together, but it was gonna be like 60 bucks for both of them and quite thick, you know, when it was done. And then I remembered that King makes these double-sided whetstones. So I love Japanese whetstones, and the reason I like them can be summed up in one word, which is fast. They cut super fast. That's because they're soft, and they so they're constantly exposing new sharp grit, and they form kind of a slurry paste because they wear out so fast. And so that, that just has a really nice, fast grinding action. And I own several King stones already, and I like all of them. They seem excellent. They cut fast and they get things sharp. 20 bucks. I got this for 20 bucks and I cut the end off and there I go. This is 280, 1000. So that's much better. Now 280, 1000 might be a little bit, you know, a bit of a leap for some sharpening stones. But again, because these Japanese water stones cut so fast, that's a totally reasonable leap to make from 280 to 1000. You'll get rid of those 280 scratches pretty fast with the 1000 side just because it's just cuts so fast. Did I mention that? They cut fast. Okay, so what I did is I took an old rusty saw and in maybe three to five minutes, I cut the end of this off. Again, because it's soft, so it was easy to cut even with just this crappy saw. I'm sure you could get away with like a hacksaw blade. Um, you know, there's always some totally trash saw sitting around and uh, that worked great. So then I ground this on a convenient piece of concrete with a little bit of water, and there you go. I've been using this for about three weeks, and it has really kind of exceeded my expectations, if anything. It is easy to carry. I discovered that 
I could put it into a mason jar lid like this and put two of them together and it clips on there and just makes a really nice carrier. Uh, this one's kind of loosened up a little bit over as it's been used, so it's actually better anyway to put a damp rag in here because then you can keep the stone a little bit damp and that means it's gonna absorb less moisture. So if you spit on it in the woods, your spit's not just gonna like disappear into the stone super fast. So yeah, with the two of these, this makes a great little holder. These are mayonnaise jar or mason jar lids, uh, regular mason jar, same size as a mayonnaise jar. And there you go, pretty cool, pretty cool. And again, of course, this makes a great holder so it keeps your fingertips far away from the action when you're sharpening. And uh, yeah, just very, very pleased with the whole thing. It turned out great. What a deal, like even just as a sharpening stone, a two-sided Japanese water stone for 20 bucks that works well is amazing. Let alone uh, five bucks for this and 15 for this. Now this will make a great, you know, multi-purpose sharpening stone, although it should be accompanied by a finer grit. Now it would be really nice if they made a double stone, you know, that was around $30 or less, that was uh, 4,000, 8,000 but they don't. They make a 1,000, 6,000, but I think what I would do is probably just buy a plain 6,000, and then you'd have a really nice set of stones that would do just about everything you want. For lugging around in the woods, just going to this 1,000 side seems fine, although I might add just a small strop, maybe like a five inch strop I could stick in my pocket to finish it off. But for sharpening your other tools, if you had this left over and you wanted to have just a really nice set of stones that would do almost everything you need to do, adding a 6,000 to this would be great. But these do wear out fast. Um, you know, I expect that from a Japanese water stone at this point. They work well because they wear out fast, basically. You know, I'd rather wear out four of these than one of a harder stone because I'm saving time sharpening and who, who cares, right? I mean, at $5 a piece, who cares? I can just use this and when it wears out, I can cannibalize this and buy another one of these if I need it or whatever. Anyway, um, I will put an affiliate link to this in my description. If you're gonna buy it, please use that and I'll get a you know tiny commission for sending you there, which is good because I need money too, like everybody else. And yeah, I think that's that's it. Hope that helps some of you ax guys out, out there. And I think I'm gonna go work on version 2.0 of this handle. And uh, yeah, that's it. See you later.